So now let's go to our ECS and create an ECS cluster. So this is the ECS console and currently I'm in the US East one region. So I'm going to go and create a cluster and I'm going to name of the cluster. I'm going to say as Siddha logic, let's say Siddha logic and the default namespace it will create the namespace by default and i'm going to choose this cluster to be an ec2 compatible and this what it will do it will create a new asg by default and i can choose here whether i'm going to use the on-demand instances or i want to use the spot instances within this cluster i will choose the architecture as linux amazon linux 2 only and the instance type i'm going to choose for this use case will be t2.medium Okay, which comes with 2V CPU and 4GB of memory. And the instance role, I'm going to create a new role. And uh, the desired capacity is going to be, let's say for now, let's say one only. And the maximum I'm going to say is to three. So for now, only one instance is going to run. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do, it can also enable SSH key pair. So if I want to enable the SSH inside my instance, I can choose to create a new key pair as well. So whether it is, it is up to you whether you want to create a new key pair. So let's create a new key pair as well. So that it will allow us to uh, go inside our SSH instances. I'm going to say, let's say Siddha only. And it's a PEM file. I'm going to create this key pair. The key pair already exists. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to choose a different name, let's say ECS. Create a key pair, yep, it has created a key pair and it was going to download that key pair into my downloads directory. So now the key pair has been created. If I click OK, it has already listed me that, that's a good thing. Now the root volume is going to be 20 GB and if uh, I'm going to leave this option as blank because I'm not going to use ECS anywhere and uh, yeah this is the default vpc and i'm going to choose the public or the private subnet that is up to you so for now i'm going to select all the subnet but only i'm going to remove this one e here and for security groups i'm going to use the default security group and i'll assign public ip so basically whether you want to assign the public ip to your ec2 instances or not for now let's uh, okay let's assign the public ip to my ec2 instances as well and i'm going to click on create so it just says that I need to specify 30 GB. So let's specify 30 GB and I'm going to click on uh, create the cluster. So what it will do is it will create a new cluster and behind the hood, it will launch an auto scaling group. Okay. So this will create a cloud formation stack. So you can view the cloud formation stack uh, in the cloud formation console and you can see which resources so it has saying that the all the successfully provision resources are live with the event stamp so it is saying that why it failed error stack please uh, I'll try later okay it is saying that it is unable to create the ECS cluster let's detect the root cause so this is the root cause service unavailable 500 in the US East one okay so let's retry this stack. Let's give it a retry. Okay, it is now the update is in progress. Okay, create progress. It has started to create the stack again. Mm -hmm. Let's just wait. Let's see which resource is just trying to spin up. It is trying to spin up an ECS cluster here and events the cluster is in progress right now okay so you can see the cluster has been created here if i go to the cloud formation it should create it all right so why it got failed in the first place because this is completely a new account so sometimes certain APIs might not be available. So if you are also having a new AWS account, you might also face this issue. So that's why I, I wanted to show you this as well. This is pretty common, right? Whenever you are trying to create a new account and trying to launch an EC2, sometimes it gives you the internal error, right? It gives it because it will take almost 48 hours for a new account to come into uh, fully available, right? So just wait. Now it is creating everything, right? It is creating the auto scaling group, launch template and everything. 
I come here, if I refresh this, currently it has does not have any instances. So if I go inside the cluster, if I click on infrastructure, there are no instances here. Remember that I have set the desired count to as one. So I'm going to wait for the desired count for one instances to show up here. And meanwhile, what you can do is you can go inside the auto scaling group and check what is happening. So let's wait. So this is the auto scaling group. It has launched one instance. If I go to instance management, this is the instance launched by the auto scaling group. And ideally, this instance should join the underlying ECS cluster. Okay, so just we, let's see what is so it has a public IP as well. And uh, if I refresh this, it's still update in progress. Okay, so wait. So yeah, you see that instance has now successfully joined our underlying ECS cluster. So this is one of the container instance. Currently it has zero running task and two, two vCPU and four GB of memory is available. And this is the ECS agent version, which is running on the instance. Okay. So yeah, and we will wait for this to complete until I'm going to pause this video. Okay. So now it has uh, successfully created our CloudFormation stack and ECS cluster has been created successfully. If I go to my infrastructure, I can see one instance has joined the cluster and this is the default capacity provider created for this particular cluster. And we're going to discuss about the capacity provider in more detail, what it is and uh, why it is required for your ECS cluster. And you can see in the auto scaling group, one instance has been launched by the ASG and this is the instance and it has a public IP assigned to it. And yep, that's it. So yeah, we have created our cluster and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.